Today's lesson is on metric unit conversion, um, and we will be focusing on converting using tables. So make sure you write some of these down in order to understand what's going on. The learning scale we're working on is on the board, um, and we're going to be focusing on two levels in this learning scale in this video. So we have a couple learning goals. We want to be able to record measurements in a two-column table, like I said we would do, and we're going to express measurements in a larger unit, or of a larger unit in terms of a smaller unit. So we're going to go from big to small today. And then we're going to um, also talk about units of measurement and those relative sizes. So basic metric units of length. When we're talking about metric units of length, we're talking about meters. And a centimeter is about the length of a staple. So a centimeter is really small. All right, and the meter is the height of a countertop. I also say sometimes that the meter is um, about the length of your arm stretched all the way out from fingertip to fingertip. And then a kilometer is the distance from um, your school that you go to now um, to Subway um, if you wanted to go there. That is about a kilometer away, a little bit bigger, of course, than a meter and a centimeter. So we know that a kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So remember I said we were going to express the larger unit, which is a kilometer, in terms of a smaller unit. Okay, so to go from kilometer to meter, what we did was we multiplied by 1,000. All right, so we're going to use the same strategy over and over again. We're going to multiply 2 times 1,000, and we know from our previous video um, that if we use the circle and triangle strategy, 2 times 1 would be our basic fact, which would be 2, and then our zeros would go here. So that would be 2,000 meters. All right. If we did 3 times 1,000, we would get 3,000 for meters. So 3 kilometers is equivalent to 3,000 meters. If we did 7 times 1,000, right, we would get 7,000. So 7 kilometers is equivalent or the same as 7,000 meters. And then if I had 70 kilometers, if I wanted to convert that to meters, I would simply multiply by 1,000 and I would get 70,000 meters. All right, so let's talk about um, another way to look at this. Um, if I were to go from meters, which is the larger unit, remember that's about your, the length of your arms stretched out, and centimeters is the smaller unit. So again, we're going from big to small. If I look at my chart here, I see that I go from one to 100. So what I did here is I multiplied my larger unit by 100 to get to the smaller unit. So if I were to do 2 times 100, I would get 200. So 2 meters is equivalent to 200 centimeters. 3 meters is equivalent to 300 centimeters. 7 meters is equivalent to 700 centimeters. And 70 meters times 100, I'm going to use the circle and triangle on this one so I don't mess up. So I know 7 times 1 is 7, and then I add 3 more zeros. So I have 7,000 centimeters is the same as 70 meters. So here let's add some um, meters together. So I know that I am looking at a final answer in meters. So I need to convert my kilometers to meters, so I'm looking at the same unit. Well, I know that one kilometer, if I multiply by a thousand, because um, kilometers times one thousand is equal to meters, so one kilometer is equal to one thousand meters. Well, here I have one thousand plus five hundred, one thousand meters plus five hundred meters, so I would get a total of one thousand five hundred meters. I can use the same concept with the next one. I know that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So really, this is equivalent to 1,000 meters plus 200 meters, so I have 1,200 meters. If I were to have five kilometers, that would be equivalent to 5,000 meters, because remember, kilometers times 1,000 is a meter, right? is how many meters you would have. And so I have 5,000 
plus 30, because I also have the 30 meters here, and so I have 5,030 meters. All right, now let's go the other way. I know that here in this 2,000, 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer, right? Well, if I have 2,000 meters, that's equivalent to two kilometers, right? Because 1,000 plus 1,000 is 2,000. So I'd have two kilometers and then 500 meters left. And here's where I got that 500 from. Again, this would be a similar idea where I would have 5,000 meters is equal to five kilometers. And then I have five meters left for my original number. All right, if I were to do this with centimeters, it's kind of the same concept, where one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So I have 100 centimeters plus 500 centimeters is a total of 600 centimeters. Same idea here, one meter is 100 centimeters. So 100 plus 200 is 300 centimeters. Five meters would be equal to 500 centimeters because again, we're multiplying by 100 to go from meters to centimeters. So I have 500 centimeters plus 30 centimeters is equal to 530 centimeters. Now let's go backwards again. So if I had 2,500 centimeters and I was converting to meters, well I have two zeros in the centimeters, two zeros here to convert to meters. So I would take off those two zeros and it would be 25 meters in zero centimeters. Same idea here. So 5,000 centimeters would be equal to 50 meters, and then I have this five centimeters left. All right, go ahead and um, I would like you to try to add these. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to convert to the same unit, and then you're going to add. So you're going to want to convert kilometers, you're going to want to make that meters here. And then um, this one you can just add the way it is because it is meters. All right, let's talk about volume. Volume is the amount of space an object occupies or take up. We use liters to measure the liquid capacity or volume of a liquid. So a milliliter is about um, a raindrop, so it's really small, but a liter is a bottle of soda, much bigger. Now if I wanted to go from liters to milliliters, well milli, remember, is one one thousandth right, of a liter. So we have to multiply by 1,000 to get to milliliters. So if I did 5 times 1,000, I would get 5,000 milliliters. So 5 liters is equal to 5,000 milliliters. Now here we're going the opposite direction. And remember the inverse of multiplication is division, right? So we would divide by 1,000 here. So 1,000 times smaller here would be 40 Nine. And I can think of this because 49 times 1,000 is equal to 49,000. So you could think of it both ways. I know that 28 times 1,000 is 28,000. 54 times 1,000 would be 54,000 for my milliliters. And then again, we're working backwards here. So we'd be dividing by 1,000, right? So how many liters would be equivalent to 92,000 milliliters? Well, if I divided by 1,000, I would get 92. And I know my check is 92 times 1,000 is 92,000. So 92 liters is equivalent to 92,000 milliliters. All right, so we're going to convert some measurements here now. So liters to milliliters, well, I know one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliter, therefore two liters would be equal to 2,000 milliliters because we're simply multiplying. So we have 2,000 milliliters plus 500 milliliters would give us a total of 2,500 milliliters. 70 liters would be equivalent to 70,000 milliliters. So 70,000 plus 850 would be 70,850 milliliters. 
and then 33 liters is equal to 33,000 milliliters. Again, just multiplying by 1,000. So 33,000 plus 15 would be 33,000. 15. All right, and then there were three more here. You can go ahead and try these three if you would like to. So again, you're just converting the liters to milliliters. And I'll actually do this bottom one with you. So we know that 3,000 milliliters is equal to three liters, right? Because you're just dividing. You're doing the opposite here. So this would be three in 812. All right, so you can do this bottom one. Try that out and see what you get. All right. So here's more problems to solve. Again, you're going to want to convert the liters to milliliters here. This is already milliliters. You're going to want to convert this to milliliters and then milliliters here before you solve. So go ahead and try those out and see what you get. And there's one more. All right, and then mass. Mass is the, is the amount of matter in a substance, and we use grams to measure the mass of an object. Um, a milligram is about the size of a grain of sugar or a grain of sand. Next up, bigger would be a gram. It's about the weight of a paper clip. And a kilogram is about the weight of a pineapple. Now we know kilograms to grams. Um, this is the larger unit. So we're going to multiply to get smaller. And we multiplied by 1,000, right, because kilo means 1,000. So 3 times 1,000 would be 3,000. Remember, if we were to go um, little to big, we would be dividing, right? So this would be 4. 17 times 1,000 would be 17,000. 300 times 1,000 would be 300,000. And then if I wanted to go backwards with this 20,000, I would just divide, right? So this would be 20, and my check would be 20 times 1,000 is equal to 20,000. So to go from kilograms to grams, we multiply by 1,000. So let's do some conversions really quickly. So I know that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So I do 1,000 plus 500, which would be 1,500. You're probably seeing a pattern here between kilo and um, just the regular base unit. And go ahead and solve that one on your own and bring it tomorrow and see what you get. And solve the last one on your own as well. Now if you were to go backwards, remember 7,000 kilograms would be equal to 7 grams, right? Sorry, backwards. 7,000 grams is equal to 7 kilograms. So we'd have a 7 here and 481 grams. All right. Again, go ahead and try and solve these. Um, we're going to want to convert all of the kilograms to grams. So we're adding the same unit. And then once you convert, you can add them together. All right, now that you are done with this lesson, please think about your learning goal again. Um, we will be practicing a lot in class, so do not worry if um, you are not able to do everything right away. And um, thank you so much for your hard work, and I will see you tomorrow.